Good evening everybody, how are you? Have you had a good day? Have you had a good week? Well, it's only Monday, isn't it? Hold on. I'll have to try and remember what day of the week we're on. Welcome to Making It Monday. Once again, we've got a gorgeous little project for you, uh, designed this week by yours truly. But we have got one or two lined up from um, our other designers that have joined the team. Uh, so we'll be looking forward to those in the next uh, weeks coming. Uh, I think next week we've got uh, a lovely little pattern from Gemma Joy. And then the following week, I think we've got a lovely pattern from Catherine. I don't know. I can't keep up, to be fair. What I need is a list. <laughs> I'm okay with a list, usually. Uh, anyway, uh, welcome to Monday. We've got another little project, as I said, for you tonight. And we've got the gorgeous little Lexi. Lexi is a little pouch um, with hexagons on the front. Look, can you see my African beads as well? I think they're the cutest beads. I mean, the blue doesn't go by. Really, I really don't care about that. I just love them. And in, in close-up, if we get to see them in close-up, they're even more beautiful um, when you can see them. Uh, the back is plain. You can put hexes on the back if you want to. Um, and then I've got the most gorgeous flowery fabric. Can you see inside? And, yep, I stitched my turning gap. I know you'll be shocked. But in actual fact, there's a picture of that in the pattern. <laughs> so it was like, I've got it under the needle to, to, to do a picture for you. I know I'll stitch it. So um, yes, oh, we've got Deborah here from Massachusetts. How lovely. Welcome Deborah from YouTube. And we've got Lynn from Facebook as well. I've got Anne and Kath. Uh, Kath says it's a gorgeous little bag. Well, you're a little biased, Kath, because you are my proofreader, but thank you anyway. <laughs> So they are all actually all Mims are really lovely little make and funnily enough I was sorting through them uh, this afternoon because I'd lost my Kim kits for anybody that knows me knows how precious my Kim kits are I had lost them okay I had searched this part of the house high and low I knew what they what they what, what box they were in but I couldn't see the box Mm. So I had a big sort out of Making It Monday projects and I've got a box which is actually overflowing. Um, I need to press them and I'm going to do a video showing as many as I can. Um, it will have to be a quick show and tell because there's, um, well, let me think, there's at least 60, 70. Well, we're in the early 70s, aren't we? I'll have to add them up at some point. I, can't, I forget what number we finished on in December and then we've, we're now on number nine for this year so however many that is um and that would take quite a while if i talk too much well of course you know i always do oh somebody says evening from windy dorset in the caravan i am actually incredibly envious of you being in your caravan um yep i'd love to be away in the motorhome i don't care if it's windy or not um here we are so there's the beads there's what it looks like i've got a little bow on the side for you it's a lovely little easy make what you can do with it pff, that's up to you. Fill it with um, sweeties and chocolates for teachers. Uh, it's a hexy pouch, so maybe you could put your English paper piecing in there and um, take away with you on your holly bobs um, to the caravan if you want to. Um, you know, it's it's one of those pouches that you'll always find a use for. And I'll be honest with you, I made this from white linen. I adore linen and it, 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 it kind of... I don't know, it has that certain look and feel about it. It looks classy. And uh, of course I've used, oh, my phone, excuse me. I've used the most amazing um, muted shades on it. I think for me, it really called for muted shades. So hopefully you've downloaded the pattern, you've got yours. That's what the front of the pattern looks like when you download it. And there are templates in here and pattern pieces um, that you'll need. I'm just going to give you a quick flash because obviously I want you to, to buy the pattern and not copy. Um, so a quick flash of the pattern pieces, there we go. Um, you've got the placement pieces, uh, pl placement picture of where the hexagons go but I'm going to show you um, as we go through what, what I would do to actually make sure that they're in the centre. So as usual I'm going to try and follow the pattern 
um, as I've written it and as Kath has proofread it. Uh, that's not to say I won't go completely off piste at some point. So um, we start straight away. Um, oh, Nancy says that's very cute. Can't wait to make it. That's lovely, Nancy. I thank you for that. It is a lovely little pouch and you'll always find a reason for using a pouch like that. So I've got all my bits and pieces ready. Now um, I've got two ways of showing you this evening of... Um, there's all my other bits. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> of, uh, there's lots of different ways you can do this. I'm going to show you a sort of traditional way and then a sort of a cheats way. We don't mind either. I, I say I don't mind either. So I'll bring my pieces in and uh, transfer you over to the to the overhead so you can see all my bits and bobs. Now, um, let's do this one in a minute. We'll do this one first because this is all about... Actually, this is steamer seam. Now, I went to a quilt show in, in Duxford on Saturday and I found a stand that had steamer seam. Now, normally I'd use Bond Web or Heat and Bond, but I saw the steamer seam and I know that some of you use it and I've never used it before. So I thought, well, wouldn't that be fun, <laughs> she says, if um, if we use the seam, steam, a, steam a seam and see how we get on. Well, it's it's quite an interesting product, actually. I've left the back on. You can see if I move those bits, you can see I've left the back on because that's sticky. Now, I didn't know that that was going to be sticky. Look, you can see it's attached to my finger. So I've left the backing papers on because I didn't want to get these stuck anywhere. So they're ready to peel, but they do bond with a, a hot iron. So with the steamer seam, what you do, and I'll just, I'll just get it, the roll I've got, um, you draw on the graph side. I don't know if you'll be able to see this because it's obviously very bright in this room and that's white, but there's a grid here and you draw on the grid side um, and then you um, peel off the back and stick it onto your fabric and then you you would you, you iron it again it's difficult for me to remember because it's a, such a new product to me um, and then you peel the back off and iron it on again and so you, I suppose it does away with um, stitching that, that I suppose that's the main thing although I suppose you could you could actually I'm just going to switch my iron on, guys and gals. You could actually do your um, bl blanket stitch or something around there. So look, let me just show you how I did it. Because like I said, I'm not sure. And you steamer seam professionals out there can put me right. So I've got my little scrap of fabric. Now I'm using all my antique French fabric today because all the all they all they first of all they all match look look how beautiful they all are and you know you've got to do something with them so i thought i know i'll put them on a on a little pouch but actually i'm going to do the other method to build the pouch that we're, we're doing tonight but i we're, i can show you what they look like at the, at the very least uh i don't know why that's come off there it's a worry. It's still sticky, so hopefully it's okay. So, um, as you would normally do it, you want to stick it on the, <coughs> excuse me, the wrong side. And you're going to peel off the backing because it can't, it's sort of stuck between the two layers. Actually, that's the graph one that's come off, which shouldn't really. And <laughs> the reason why I say that is because I've that's where the drawing is. I don't know if you can see that, that I've drawn on there. So we'll just have to we'll just have to go with it. So that gets stuck on. Obviously, if you've drawn on this, then you can see it. I wonder if I can get my pencil and I'll use one of my other hexagons and just quickly draw around because obviously we want them to be the right size. There we go, it's not too bad. It's a bit bit rough because um, I wasn't expecting to do that. I, I thought the other side would come off. 
this is the thing when you're using a new product like anything you don't really know how it's going to go so <laughs> I've drawn my lines again now which is great and I've just quickly put my iron over that I didn't use heat eraser I used pencil and I've obviously I've stuck one side of my hexagon down um, then you can cut this out while it's still hot I would say <coughs> excuse me don't try to peel it and it's a bit, a bit of the same with, with bond away, heat, and, heat and bond really. You shouldn't, you shouldn't really try to remove it while it's still warm. Um, so we'll give that a moment just to cool and put the backing in the bin. Now I've used some antique, well, I suppose it's, I suppose it's, well it's a piece of linen but it's possibly a tablecloth, possibly, I'm not sure which is the right side I think possibly that I think possibly that's the right side sorry I'm flicking it around because I can't decide which is what let's just put that there and I you know if I I'm going to put it on there but then I, I might tomorrow unpick the whole bag and actually stitch these on because I much prefer to stitch so to find the center you're just going to give yourself a little squidge you don't use your iron it will be just too much I'll just bring my little iron in so you can see it's too much just give it a finger press fold that and give that a finger press and you end up and in the pattern you can see there's a very definite fold but you end up with a central point now I really can't remember which one I was going to use as my centre. I think it was going to be the heron. So I fussy cut a lot of these. And obviously this is the sort of thing you can do. Look at that. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? And each one of these I'm going to peel the back off and place it down. And because it's slightly sticky, it, it kind of it just stays there. You don't need to pin it. So again, we'll just peel that one away. Let's just keep all my rubbish to one side and let's have a look oh that's not even straight look let's do it so it's straight and this one here we go but so steam seam in my opinion is is interesting because it's sticking down and I'm assuming, I mean, I haven't read, really read the instructions, to be honest. I'm assuming once you iron it, that is permanent. But if not, you can just stitch it as normal. But it's nice to use different things. That's what I always think. So just sort of build it up. And you can see I'm using creams and whites. I'm really not fussed about, about being precious about these sort of things. That one I'm going to pop down there. And then this is the one that I just did. So then you're just going to peel that backing. And to remove the backing, I always just scrape my nail over the backing paper. So I'm supporting it with that finger and scraping it with my thumb. And it will split the paper from the fabric. And you just peel it away. And like I say, it's sticky look. So, which is quite interesting, isn't it? Well, I think so. So that one I think is going to go there. But look, can you see I've got that design? So I wonder if I can move them. <laughs> Let's just get it so it's right. There we go. It's not very straight. I'll just move that in a second. I suppose keep handling them and it's, you know, it's not, not really a very good thing to do. And because of, uh, if you've cut them by hand, which is obviously what you've done, Sometimes you get, have to have a little poetic license of where you actually place them or just trim them back again. There we go. That's not too bad. I'm, I'm fairly, fairly happy with that. Just leave it like that. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I love the, I love the heron. And then all you're going to do is iron it. And that will then be permanent. Oh, the smell of this is just gorgeous because it's vintage. It has a certain smell about it. So that is using steamer seam. But of course, you could um, use Bondaweb heat and bond. And like I say, you don't have to, unless this is going to be washed. I doubt, I doubt that's going to be washed. 
but if it's going to be washed then maybe you want to stitch that down so that is one way of doing it and if you don't want to do like the english paper piecing type of um just you know sort of um the type of design that I'm going to do, sort of, <laughs> then you can do something like that, which is just as easy. Uh, oh, Sarah says it is permanent. I like using the quarter inch size for closing openings. Oh, gosh, Sarah, that's a good idea because it's sticky. I suppose it's a bit like using quilter's tape, but actually it's now permanent. So that's going to look really gorgeous. Um, so that's going to that's now going to be on the back of my my pouch, which, you know, I don't mind. So now we move on to the other method. Now, again, I've got a little square of fabric and I've got my hexagon. Now, to for me, the easiest thing for me to do is to stick a little bit of quilter's tape right in the centre of the um, hexagon paper, if you like. And that helps it stay put for when I'm cutting around it. So I'm just going to place that down. Now, I know I've been rather generous with my fabric, so don't, don't, don't. Don't shoot me, um, <laughs> because obviously you need to see it for demonstration purposes. Now, if you want to, or somebody says, I'm going to put the flower at the bottom in the centre, at the bottom in the centre. Which flower? Bottom centre. Anyway, <laughs> so um, that quarters tape is now holding that hexagon in place, which means it's not going to budge. We're going to cut around it. Now I've said standard is quarter of an inch. I always think if you've got a little bit of extra fabric, do a little bit more, do a three eighths. Don't go as much as perhaps half an inch, but please give yourself, you know, cut yourself a bit of slack. That's all I'm trying to say is you don't have to, it doesn't have, you don't have to be a martyr to it. That's, you know, you just want to end up with a lovely, lovely little project. Now, you could, if you wanted to, do the old fashioned way, if you like. Well, not really old fashioned, more modern, I suppose. Um, you could put your glue down and fold these over like you would with English paper piecing. Now, the only problem with that is we're going to iron this within an inch of its life. And that's, it's a good glue and you might pull it about and distort it a little bit by, because we're going to obviously take the paper out. We don't want to stitch the paper onto our bags unless you want to, but I suggest not. So you could use your um, glue if that's what you want to do. There's no right or wrong. There's no right or wrong. So your best friend is going to be Best Press. So if you haven't got any, think about investing in some. And what we're going to do is that we're going to use a nice medium hot iron, so nothing too hot. And you're going to do opposites. So you're going to do three opposites. And there's a picture of that in the pattern, just so you don't forget. But you've got this video. And I always think you end up with, it looks like a little hat, you know. What are they called? Tri, tri, trifold, trifold hat, is it? Tri. Or something, something try, or try something. So <laughs> you fold it over the three edges like that. And then what you want to do is, the, the coolest one is obviously the, the first one you did, is because obviously you've got to think about your fingers here. So now you're going to fold this over as well and give that a press. And try, I know we're using just copy paper here, but try to get your folds on the edge of the paper. It is tricky. Um, but you, you know, if you could use card as, because we're going to take them out, we're not going to stitch anywhere near them. So you could take them out, uh, sorry, make them from card and take them out. So I'll leave that for you to decide how much work you want to do. So we're folding these over and that's the last one there. So you, hopefully you've got a nice crease. Now, if I took the paper out of that, you can see it doesn't, these, they don't fit, they don't flat, they're not flat, and I want them to be super duper flat because they're easier to stitch. Tricorn, thank you, Sue. I know it's try something. Um, <laughs> so you want these to be really, really flat. So you can spray your best press and iron with the paper in and then take it out or be brave and take the paper out, okay? So, I don't know, let's just go mad and do it with the paper on. But you can see, I'll let it go, you can see it's already starting to want to curl up. 
because it's damp. So you got to tell it, you've already put the creases in, so you've got to tell it who's boss. So we're just going to give it a little press. And that's, look, that what, look what a difference that's made. So we're going to take the paper out, because obviously we don't want the paper in there. It's all damp now. Look, the quilter's glue comes away. Just pull it away. But that's kept that absolutely solid while I needed it to be solid. So now we've got this lovely shape here. We, we, again, we want it flatter than that. I know. Can it, can it get any flatter? And the answer is yes. So we'll give it a bit of a iron, get the heat on it, and then we're putting our clapper over the top. Now that clapper, which is a beech wood, and if you haven't got one, they're really a super duper investment. That takes all the heat out. And look at that. I mean, if I hold it like that, can you see? That is wafer thin. You can't see it. It's not sticking up. That is wafer thin. And that's how you want your hexagons to be because we want them to behave while we're stitching. And the only way they're going to behave is, and you're going to stitch them nicely, if they're wafer thin like that. I mean, that's just quite incredible, isn't it? Quite incredible. It's, it was stuck to there. <laughs> so that's our hexagon. So that's your two ways. These are the ones um, that I've done earlier. So again, using exactly the same fabrics. I want you to have a look at the difference between the two. Let's put them side by side. And I think even without stitching, these are much more defined. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? This kind of blurs into one, which is fine. You, you could still stitch. You could do a, a dark or a dark pink line of stitching around there just to lift them up. I would stitch each one of these individually so you end up with two rows of stitching. We're going to do that with this, which is just quite beautiful. And that, with any luck and the wind in the right direction, that's going to fit in there. I'm inclined to put that in the middle. Can you see it's quite a bit darker? But can you see that one in the middle is a goat? Can you see it? Or, or a ram? No, it's, it is a... Let me bring it up. Can you see? <laughs> Let's just try it. I think that's better, don't you? I think that's better. I had them all fitting beautifully. The thing about, and I'll always say it, you can be... Obviously, take your time. I'm always under pressure with my time. I do still like that goat in the middle though. No, leave it. So <laughs> I'm gonna well I'm gonna be on my holidays doing my English paper piecing and thinking why didn't I put the goat back? Right, I want to vote. Do I put the goat in the middle or do I leave it where it is? <sighs> okay, I need I need a vote. I'm gonna have to wait for you to say it's gonna take ten seconds for your votes to come up. In the meantime, I'll get these up on, on YouTube so I can see your comments. So bear with me. I'm going to lean over a little bit. So I'll need your vote. Middle. Goat in the middle. Is it a goat? I just think it's a goat. Uh, right, I'm going to see if I can watch this live. Oh, who knows? Just a sec. I'm going to have a look at your comments in just a sec. Here we go. That's better. Lovely. Right, let's have a look. Oh, crikey. Leave it where it is, Carol. Put it where, put it, put the lily in the middle. This. There's also a bird here. <laughs> Goat in the middle. Leave it. Leave it, says the name with an exclamation mark. Jackie says, Goat in the middle. Cynthia says, Leave it. Leave the goat there as it was. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> Okay, you told me I'll do it like that. Better? I'm going. I, I mean, I'm going to. You see, with this one, do you see that is the same as that, but there was a little bit of white. So maybe I should have had a bit of white on there instead of such a solid colour. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I don't mind. Crikey! Swap it with the lily, so you have three more solid pink ones spaced on the edge. Swap it with the lily. Which one's the lily? 
I can see a bird. Do you, do you think, is that the, that's, is it a lily? <laughs> see the pink one's on the edge. You know what, I'm just going to leave it as is. As I'm getting, as I'm looking at it, I'm getting more confused. <laughs> Oh, Marion says lily in the middle. I don't even know which is the lily. Is that the lily? There's a bird. That's a rose. That's just like little daisies. That That is actually part of a, a gentleman's garment. I wonder if I've got that fabric handy. I could show you. No, it's not. No, it's not handy for me to show you. OK, I'll, I'm going to leave it as it is. Bird in the middle, says Lynn. Oh, my gosh. Really? Now, after this, I'm going to leave it. If I don't like it, I'm going to put the goat back in the middle. OK. Oh, that looks quite nice. Who said that? Lynn. Because I suppose it's the cream, isn't it? I, I like the goat down the bottom now. <sighs> right, I'm going to leave it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise we'll be here all night. So that one I'm just going to leave as it is. And then at some point I'll perhaps do some hand stitching on there. Just a lovely running stitch, I think. Nothing fancy, just a lovely running stitch with some perhaps um, perlay thread, something like that. So I'll put that to one side. We'll need it in a minute, but I'll put it to one side. Um, for my lining, I'm using a vintage um, sort of sheeting, I suppose. It's a bit rough. There's some flaws in it, but it's going to go on the inside. And then for my two pieces for my channel, I've got, got the same material again. Um, you don't don't line it. it doesn't need stabilizing. It's such a little pouch, even though it looks quite big because of the amount of work on it. You don't need to stabilize it. OK, you really don't. So don't be tempted unless you're using um, poly cotton or something like that which I'd like to think you wouldn't I'd like to think because I want you to use some beautiful fabric right some some really lovely beautiful fabric now I'm right close in with my needle today because I want you to see the stitching now I've just got to increase my stitch length to let's say 2.4 I'm going to bring my machine right in there we go. That's lovely. And ideally what you're going to do is you're going to start off with just this one in the middle here and you're going to stitch that and then you're going to add all the others. And I think in the pattern it shows that I've just got the one there. But just so you can see, well, I suppose I could leave it as it is. Leave it as it is. Take a I'll leave it as it is. All right, I'm talking to myself, guys. What is really handy is a stiletto because it's going to help you keep your edges nice and neat. So we're going to stitch the middle one first and all we're going to do is stitch around the outside. Try and make sure, and I'm going to look at it again just to make sure, try and make sure that it's that it's square on. So this line here is 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 level with your top edge. OK, that's I suppose that's just the only rule of thumb, I'd say. So um, I've got my stitch length on 2.4. But you can go smaller if you want. Obviously, you're going to take your pins out. You do not stitch over pins, not in Liz's world. And look, you can see that I'm using my stiletto now to hold my fabrics just to make sure that they're staying put. Because sometimes when you're using um, small pieces, they tend to get ruckled up if you're not careful. So you just want to just take your time. If, you th if you're a little bit too far away, then just do that one more stitch and just be brave. That, because you don't want a clumsy um, seam here. You just really don't want a clumsy seam. So all the time, there we go, I've gone round one. All the time you're keeping your eye on it. So now we're going to do this top one here. So I've taken the pin out already. So it's it's now kind of loose. I'm not going to break my thread. So there'd be no point in doing that. But I'm just going to lift the needle up a second because I've just caught that that fabric there. I want to just move it along so you can see how the stiletto allows you to move the fabric, manipulate it. And I'm going to start. It looks a bit 
cack-handed from where you are at the minute. Um, I want to start on this far edge here and come across. I want this join between the two to be perfect. And hopefully, as we go around... So now I'm going anti-clockwise, which is not um, helpful. And as we go around, hopefully the hexagons will stay put. But you could, of course, use... Uh, quilters tape to hold them down just make sure they stay down I'm, you can see I'm using my fingers I'm using my stiletto and just working my way around just taking my time and just as I say hold them down so they stay where they're supposed to be and just work your way around the whole piece okay so that's great we've got two down so we've got this one, so there's a little thread, let's get that out of the way. We've got this one down here, we've got the one in the middle which you can't see, but now we're on this one, so we're going to go around this one. Again I'm going to take the pin out and I'm going to stitch again the seam that joins on that middle hexagon there. And I'm just going to hold that fabric down and I'm just going to jump across you really won't see it unless you're using really bright or dark thread or very complementary thread. You're, you're really not going to see it. Um, and even when we come round to the other side, I'm probably have to break my threads. I could do a double row and it really wouldn't matter much at all. So try and keep... Now do you see, when we get to this, can you see, you want to use your stiletto to hold that in place. You want it so those points meet. Um, if you didn't hold it, I would say keep your pins out the way. You don't really need them unless you're very nervous about stitching without pins. But the stiletto is holding that exactly where I want it to be. And you've got a little bit of leeway. So I'm holding that down which means when I come up it's going to be exactly where I want it to be there we go so we're coming back to where we started and if you if you want to if you're feeling brave you could actually stitch in the ditch between these two pieces to come up to this hexagon here shall we do it yeah do it why not let's live dangerously so you're stitching between, in the ditch, in other words, it, you're stitching right in the seam there. And, you know, if you take your time and you've got good eyes and you're not sitting at a funny angle like me, you'll be able to do it. So that's it. And then all we want to do is to, just to make sure again that these two edges here butt up. So the middle one and this this outside one we want it to be perfect because that's where your eye will look <laughs> every time you get this bag out you'll look and you'll see i mean that actually that's moved slightly so i'm just making sure that this this isn't too bad here and it's slightly puckered because it should have started a wee bit over but we'll, 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 we'll just go with it just make sure it's sitting straight and like I say, you could you could use your clover, what is it, a clover glue stick? Oh, I can never remember what it's called. Oh, a sew line, the sew line glue stick. If you wanted to, hold it down. You could put, put a piece of um, bonder web on the back. And, um, is that what I'm thinking? Yeah, yeah, put a beast bond web on the back. Um, right, so this one is just not meeting very well. So I'm going to do my best with my stiletto. It's amazing how much you can do with a stiletto by moving it, at, moving it where you want it to be, not where it's landed up. So there we go, we've done one, two, three, four. So I've got three more to do. So again, I'm going to stitch in the ditch. This time I'm going to put my stiletto there to hold that fabric where it should have been in the first place. So let's... Um, okay. So I'm stitching in the ditch. So you can see that 
The other method is going to be obviously a lot quicker, but sometimes there's a lot of enjoyment. So as you're eyeing this up here, look, I'm, I'm making sure that this is going to be okay like that so I can hold that there but also making sure that this side's okay and you could using your stiletto again you could stretch it a bit if it's not quite where it wants to be because all these things are hand cut there's a room for error if you've got a die cutting machine by all means use that but there's still a little bit of human error in all of this so don't beat yourselves up so we're just coming back to where we started again. I'm just using a cream thread, it's great, it's very neutral, it doesn't show, it kind of disappears. So again, I'm just going to stitch in the ditch, again using my stiletto to help me. Let's just line these up. I'm pushing the fabric underneath so it hits the point and then coming down yeah so like I say there's all sorts of different ways and no doubt you know I shall uh, I shall hear all your different ways over the next um, few few uh, weeks I'm just moving that one out of the way because it's like a little lost soul now the only one left with a pin so again I'm just going to move that across slightly and then you could, obviously, you could add beading to this, you could add embroidery. Because these are all vintage fabrics, oh my word, they just lend themselves to buttons and beads. Oh yes, and that's the other thing I said in the pattern. If you don't want to do hexagons, if hexagons are not your thing, then find seven buttons, which are absolutely glorious, and then do buttons. Just put a pattern, you know, a design of buttons. You can make a little flower and all sorts. Yeah, why not? You know, I have to give you some sort of idea of what you can do. Let's just, uh, I think that's, uh, do I want it going like that? I think I do, yes. I want it to be straight. So let's just see if that one is better. I've got a slightly longer edge. <laughs> so I'm stitching along the ditch. Just catching the point of that hexagon now. Let's just trim that little bit of thread away. And let's just stitch that. So, I mean, for quickness sake, I could have just done the Bonder web version. We could have been finished and I'd be sitting watching the TV and a cup of tea. But actually, sometimes it's quite nice to, to watch a nice little bit of slow stitching. And again, if you wanted to, you could do a buttonhole stitch with your machine or by hand around all of these pieces still. There we go. Am I done? Yes. So this is where I'll do a little back stitch. Just a couple of stitches. Well, that's three. That's my machine, that is. And there we are. So let's get it the right way around. So there's our piece done. Oh, it's a bit close. <laughs> I'll show you on the overhead, but that's that's it stitch. So not bad at all, not bad at all. Let's just quickly whiz you to the front for a moment, um, and then we'll have a look on the overhead, see what that looks like. Okay, so I'll, I'll need the machine in again in a second. So I want again. I'm going to show you the difference between the two. If I can see, yeah, here we go. So let me just uh, bring you in just for a second. I'll leave my machine mat there so we can, it's easy to go. So again, I want you to have a look at the difference because, and I think it's important that you see the difference between the two. And I know you might, um, you might prefer this method because it's quick, uh, but sometimes, you know, taking your time really does, uh, it leads to all the enjoyment yeah it just I don't know it, it's just a lovely little bit of stitching so that's the one we've done on the machine that's the one we've used steamer seam my new my new I'm not going to say favorite but my new product let's say so there's our two bits done I'm, obviously I'm going to use that as the back of my piece anyway so the next thing we're going to do and I'm just I'm just going to check the pattern just to make sure we're we're kind of we're kind of there 
Let's have a look. Just uh, follow the pattern so it's easy for you. OK, so we're going to do the stitching of the bag next because I thought we were going to do the channels, but they come in a second. So those are the channels. I'll tell you what I will do just to save a bit of time with the channels. And it says in the pattern that you need to turn them over on each short end. Um, and then top stitch, OK? So I might as well, while I've got a moment, do that. At least turn, fold these over. It's probably easier to fold them and iron them now because we don't at this moment we don't need the iron for anything else so we can get get rid of that little chore now because i'm using a linen it is prone to fray now of course you could if you wanted to zigzag these edges so they you know they're nice and neat um if it's if you're going to gift it i'd say yeah do it or you could zigzag down here we're just going to stitch a straight stitch just to hold those pieces down but if you're going to gift it, maybe you're going to um, neaten it if you want to. But because this is linen, you know, it's it's the nature of it. And I don't mind that, to be honest. While we're here, even though I'm going to stitch down those two sides and those two sides, I'm actually going to fold this in, in half um, and just give that a little press ready. OK, I'm just going to give it a little bit of memory. Not much. And the same with this one. I think I've got glue on my mat. I'll have to see if I can wash it. Um, yeah, so just gonna, that's all I'm gonna do. Okay, that's all I'm going to do. Nothing special. Just give it a little bit of uh, crease memory. So we're gonna put those to one side because we'll need those in a minute. In actual fact, what I can do while that's still warm, there we go. I'll put my clapper on it. <laughs> so, what we're going to do now is right sides together and we're going to stitch the two pieces together, the two body parts if you like. And we're going to do the same for the lining but obviously we're going to leave a turning gap in the bottom. You can leave it in the side if you want. Up to you. Well, if you leave it in the bottom of the lining, let's bring that in so I don't confuse you. Let's just make sure. So that's the right side. This fabric is just so lovely and it, I didn't quite have enough. Can you see? So I've got to go quite careful here because I just didn't have enough. It was right. It was a smallish piece. And if I just move that over a tad, that'll be better. So you could, if you wanted to, as I say, leave your turning gap there. That's what I suggest in the pattern. But that's still a little bit of a curve or you could leave it there where it's a nice straight edge. Either or, doesn't matter. So again, we're going to stitch around here. Now, don't forget my little top tip is that use two pins for a stop start. I mean, you don't have to. I'm sure you'll remember. But just in case you want to use this method on something else, it's a good little, little trick because your brain will think, why on earth have I got two pins? Oh yes, that's my turning gap. That's my stop, that's my start. Okay, easy to remember. So there's our two pieces now, right sides together, ready for stitching. Oh, it's just such gorgeous fabric. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. So I'm gonna bring my machine in, see if we can get it uh, lined up pretty much how I had it before. Just get rid of my, my mouse. That's just, that's not too bad. We're quite close up on that today because I wanted you to see the hexagons being done. Normally I wouldn't have it that close. So about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I would do a couple of stitches forward and a couple of stitches back, nothing uh, major. Oh, we're gonna increase the stitch length a little bit. 2.8 will be fine, otherwise we'll be here all night and work around your piece. Now, don't forget, if you're a little bit stuck for something to do tomorrow, what I want you to do is take your machine apart and give it a clean. I want you to get your brushes in there. Um, if, it, if it does take oil, give it a tiny little couple of drops of oil. And I also want you to change the needle. When was the last time you changed your needle? Be honest. 
I'm actually not sure when I did. I'll be honest with you. Um, it needs a need. I can tell because it's a little bit clunky. And I actually can't remember when I did change it last. <laughs> so I'm just being honest with you. So tomorrow, if you're not too busy and you've got um, half an hour, uh, get your brushes out, your paint brushes clean and take your machine apart. Don't be frightened by it. That's what it's. Uh, that's why you got the tools. And give it a nice clean. There we go. So that. Sorry, we're a bit near. I'm no point me showing you because you can't see. But I've done the. I've done the bag. I've done the lining. Now we're going to do the outer. So let's once again, one or two stitches, and we'll go back. So what I might do is I might get up in a sec and just adjust the camera, just so you can see a little bit more. Let me do that now. So you'll see my backdrop for a moment. <clears throat> and I'm just going to zoom out a bit. There we are. That's a little bit better. You can see the, pretty much the whole bag now. So all the way around. Now again, this is linen. Now normally I would say to you, clip the curves or use definitely use your pinking shears but I'm gonna because I'm using linen which is just so gorgeous I can't even tell you because it must be a hundred years old um, I'm not going to do that I don't want to jeopardize the strength even though you'll have the lining inside which will take the majority of whatever I put you know the, the sort of weight and all that sort of thing inside I'm still not going to compromise it I want it to last me a lifetime but what I would say to you is, if you have got some pinking shears, take your pinking shears, hold on, I'm gonna stop moving in a second, and you're gonna pink around these corners. Even if you don't do anything else, just pink around these corners, because um, it does make a difference. Okay, so let's just take you back so you can see a little bit better on the overhead, and we'll just move the machine out of the way. So you've got the lining, and you've got your outer done. Now, let's see. I could use, because this is just um, old vintage sheeting, I could just show you on here what you're going to do. So you're just literally going to just snip that corner off. There's no need to go crazy. It does help with the roundness, if you like, of your bag. But quite honestly, I'm not sure I'm too worried about that sort of thing. Let's put those back. And then what we want to do now is to turn this, let me just, <laughs> I'm just bringing these in, look, and they've been under my clapper <laughs> and they're absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. <laughs> they're so flat now. Fantastic. So if you haven't got one, do, do um, treat yourself. So we're going to turn through our outer bag piece. We're just going to turn it through and you can give it a press at this stage if you wanted to. Make it look beautiful. Um, I'm not too fussed if my corners aren't perfect. Because I haven't cut anything away, I don't expect them to be, but that's not bad. Because you've still got all that fabric trying to sort of fold itself on each other around this curve inside. But I'm okay with that. I think that looks fine. Look at that. Beautiful. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to take our channel pieces and we're going to pin them to the front and back. Now, if, if it was the perfect world, you'd have maybe an eighth of an inch gap between the finish of one and the start of another. But I want you to pin them from the middle out and see what you get. Oh, I haven't stitched them, have I? I need to stitch them. <laughs> I need to do that first. I'll do that first and then we'll do this bit. And then what we're going to do is pin these on. So you've got three raw edges here. You've got the two long raw edges of your channel together and you've got the raw edge of your bag and they're going to sit together and you're going to base them together an eighth of an inch all the way around. OK, but obviously I need to stitch my ends first. I'd completely forgotten about that. There we go. So let's just bring the machine in so you can see what I'm doing. 
and there we are let's just move that so like I said before because I'm using a linen um, ideally this is going to be zigzagged because seriously it, it will fray within an inch of its life but I'm just going to go with it so just chain piece those two pieces together just give them a little snip and then we'll do the other ends so I suppose it's about an eighth of an inch away from the fold not too precious about it and don't forget if you if your machine has a habit of sucking the fabric down into the feed dogs use a a leader and a follower so a scrap piece of fabric that will stop that from happening so you what you do is if I can find a scrap piece of fabric which is a ridiculous thing to say because I've got a lot I'll just cut a little piece off so you don't want a single layer so this is a single layer of fabric you don't want a single layer you want a double layer so you've got a little bit of substance and that's how you start off and then as you come to your more delicate fabric, let's say, you're just going to pop that under and it will just carry on and the end won't get sucked into your machine. So use that leader and follower. And then once you, oops, oops, just mess something up. And then um, just when you finish, when you st finish stitching, bring that back and finish off on your, that's the leader this is the follower okay and that way you it'll help your machine okay so what we're going to do as I said before <laughs> is to put these back so they're folded in half okay um, and then you're going to baste them onto your bag front and back so you're going to position them like that so if you have a look there's your side seam now I would start about an eighth of an inch away from that side seam and I would have a look at the other end now obviously you're going to pin it so let's just bring it along and see so it's not quite there so I'm just going to move it slightly the other thing is you could actually take your um, free arm off I'm not sure it helps with this but I'll, I'll take it off anyway there we go and you can pop it under there and mine's quite big I have to say but this does just fit under there okay so you're stitching about an eighth of an inch and you're stitching three raw edges together the, the one the next seam we do when we put the lining in it's a quarter of an inch so you do you do get all all the edges together fine Let's just get my I've just got some loose threads there let's get rid of them make it tidy okay and then bring it up so there's one attached okay can you see yes that's perfect let's just this is on the uh, that's it and then we're just going to get the other one so if you're folding it in half again and you're going to start stitching about there can you see there's a nice little gap and again as we get close I'll always use my stiletto because look that holds it much better than me trying to get my finger in there and then your the needle's going to go through your nail now that doesn't sound very good does it so just carry on I don't know if I've got all my layers I think I have so all the way along just use that stiletto again and like I say this really doesn't need stabilizing especially if you're using a beautiful fabric and that's why I said in the pattern use a linen or a cotton canvas do not stabilize it doesn't need it. it does not need it so there we are so you can see we've got a little gap this looks quite big on screen but actually it's not that big and there is our channels put onto the, 
the bag front. Okay, so now what we're going to do is get hold of our lining piece. Now we haven't turned that through. Hold on, let me pick it up. We haven't turned it through, so there's my lining. There's the right side inside look, and that's the right side. So we're going to do right sides together. So we're just literally slipping one inside the other. You got your turning gap, so there's nothing to worry about. So pop it in. And what you're doing is you're lining up the seams. So those side seams are now going to, and your channels are going inside. It, it would be very strange to try and stitch this with the channels still on the outside. You couldn't, you couldn't I don't think you could do it very easily. But the question might be asked. So where your seams are, so can you see my seam there and there? You're going to put those two together. If you want to nest those seams and do all that stuff, then please do. Pop a pin in and then come round the other side and make sure that these two side seams match. Where are they? There. And pop a pin in. Now, if you want to, you could put another load of pins in to hold that all in place, but I tend to sort of just go for it. And that should sit fairly snug. It looks like I might have to, yeah, that, I mean, that's okay. That's gonna work. It looks a little bit loose, but I think it's gonna be fine. Um, and then it's right size together, as I said, and you're gonna stitch a quarter inch seam allowance. So once again, try and get it under your free arm. As I say, mine is quite big, but yours might not be. So yours might go in a, over rather a lot easier than mine and if you can't manage it then just stitch from the inside which is what I might end up doing actually this is now not wanting to go underneath and over hold on let's try again I think I'm catching something somewhere oh blow let's just do, <laughs> let's just do it so you're stitching <laughs> So now you can't see, that's the idea of having a free arm. Let me just try it one more time. So this is where if I got one of my older machines out, it would, it would be fine. Come along, little bag, you can do it. It's not going to do it, it's just being darned awkward. So I'm going to stitch from the inside because that's easier for me. And we're going to do a quarter inch seam allowance. So now you're not going to see very much. So I'm sorry about that. But I mean, the only thing about sewing from the inside is that you can see where you previously stitched. So all is not lost, as they say. So. Let's get the other pin out. There we go. And as I say, if you use lots of pins, this should be a really easy little job. But obviously you can't see very much, and I do apologise. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? There we go. Let's just move that around a bit. That's it. Well, actually, my I think my outer is a little bit bigger than my lining, so we're going to have to have a little bit of a little bit of a crunkle. Oh, but that'll be. I don't mind. Okay, so there's my two pieces attached. Okay, very difficult to see. So let's go on the overhead so you can see a little bit more clearly. Oops. There we go. Just move that out. Try not to lose anything on the way. So there we are. So you can see what it looks like. That's what it looks like. We've stitched it all the way around. So the channels are inside. There's my um, inside of my bag there. So all we're going to do now is just pull it through. And because you've already t turned your outer bag to the outside showing, it, it doesn't get too crunkled up the lining does because it's inside out so sometimes it's better to have your outer fabric um, 
turned right side round. So there we are. So that's our bag completed. Obviously we need to stitch this. Now look, you don't need me to stitch that tonight, do you? I can do a finger press there and pretend I've done it. <laughs> um, the main thing is that we're going to obviously pop this inside there and we're going to give it a bit of a press. This is the ideal time to do it. There we go. We need loose threads. Let's snip off and we'll get the iron. Again, you're going to use some best press if you've got some. It's a great product, you know, have a little think about it. I mean, obviously it's, it says sometimes it could be referred to as a bit of a luxury, but you know what? I think we're worth it. So just give that a little spray. You can see where I had a little ruckle there. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And then give it a nice press. Oh, it's just looking gorgeous. There we go. And on this side, just pull your channels out so they're sitting upright. There we are. Look at that. And do you not prefer the stitched hexagons there? Do you not think they look better? So now I've got some cording. I, I think I prefer this actually, even though it's thin. That's a little bit too white. That's like a velvet. This is like a velvet. Um, not sure that goes with a, a linen. But I've got a natural sort of tape here. So I think I prefer that. Use whatever you've got. And you want about that much. Which is, I, I can't remember if I say on the pattern, but you need that much. <laughs> and I've got myself some bookings, some proper Japanese ones. So um, you could use any of these, I suppose. I liked the look at this one earlier I was looking at because I don't know if you've seen anything like this before. Okay, let me hold it so you can see it properly. There we go. So this little ring comes back. Do you see it opens up like a pair of tweezers? I mean, you, to be honest, you don't need it for this bag, but I thought we'd just have a little play. So I think you would <laughs> grab hold of your fabrics like that, your ribbons, slide your, slide your ring up and that's grabbed it. Could could be better. Let me just do that again. Let me just do that again. I oh, don't suppose you'd need to put it right on the right in the middle. Hold on. There we go. Let's just fold that over. Pop that in like that. This is the first time I've used them, so forgive me if I'm being a bit cack-handed. Slide the ring up, and that grabs it. Look. And then you've got this bit to thread. It's exciting, isn't it? Very exciting. Let's do it this end. So we're just going to, going to put one uh, piece of ribbon through. We're not going to do two and have a double tie. We're just going to do one. So I don't know what I've done there. I've caught something somewhere. I'll have to have a look later. By the time we've tied it up, it won't matter. OK. So there we are, that's all the way through. It's natty, isn't it? I like that. I like a nice little gadget. So that has, so that's drawn it up. But what we need is a couple of beads. And I've got my fabulous African beads. So let's see what I've got. It doesn't really go with the fabric, but I don't mind. So I'll tip them out. <laughs> oh, obviously those big ones aren't going to be any good. I quite like these yellow and green ones. I mean, they just don't go, do they? But I, I'm not sure I mind. I've got those blue ones. Oh, well, how about those? They're a little bit more dainty. <gasps> Look at that one. I don't know if I've got two of those. Aren't they gorgeous? 
Oh, I like that, that one. Right, so, <laughs> so you could use a needle if you wanted to, or we're just going to fold our um, sort of, what is it? It's not really a cord, what is it? Tape. I'm going to fold our tape, put a knot in. There we go. Make sure that's not going to come off. That'll be fine. Cut it at a jaunty angle. Isn't it lovely? So you could raid your bead box or you could go to your local charity shop, your thrift shop and see what they've got. Again, nice little knot. Too. Don't make it too small otherwise your bead will come off. You could always put a little dot, dot of dot, little drop of hot glue. Right, okay. <laughs> I can't move them now, they're gonna go everywhere. So now what we can do is just tie a bow. And there we are. There's our bag made, isn't that glorious? Loving the beads. And they, they make a little noise. I don't know what they're made of, probably just plastic. I don't know if you can hear that. Bodkins. Yes, they're bodkins. But these were, Jap these are, I should say, not were, these are Japanese and um, they're not um, the cheapest of bodkins because I just saw them being advertised and I thought, you know what? They look just the business. You don't have to get anything quite so posh. It's all written in Japanese, so I haven't got a clue, but that's okay. And I'm going to keep them in the packaging because I, they're quite small, aren't they? I don't want to lose them. So they're going to stay in there. But yeah, I'm really happy with those. I'm certainly very happy with my two little bags. Quite different and yet very similar. So there we are. I'm sorry I've uh, gone a little bit over time. I'm sure you won't mind. But we've ended up with two very beautiful little bags with of course that different method on the back which now I'm going to have to hand stitch I'm I might leave it for when I'm in the motorhome so I've got something to do but you could put all sorts of oh, there's Millie you could put all sorts of beading on there or French knots all those sort of you could embroidery stitches you could um, do a little monogram on the back make it special make it for you make it special um, you could store some toiletries in here you could store some little soaps in here, put some potpourri in here and just have it on your desk when you're working and you can smell the potpourri. Um, put some little chocolates in there as well. It'd be, be crazy not to. But it's a sweet little bag. I hope you've enjoyed the, watching the tutorial and I hope you'll make uh, a few of these. It's a nice easy pattern because it's a Making It Monday pattern. Now, um, tomorrow at seven o'clock on my website, nowhere else so on my website not on facebook not on youtube not on instagram my website <laughs> i think i've said that enough now um, i'm doing a live on how to create this little bowl here with cord i've got some more sari silks i got some the other day i've got some more here so we're going to have a little go using sari silks and wrapping the cord and making that little bowl. So that's seven o'clock live on my website on, it says Lizzie TV. <gasps> Fingers crossed it works, we'll see. And then on Friday, I'm with the lovely Lorraine and Jeff and we're going to, do, on Lizzie Curtis, and we're going to do a little interview, a little discussion about their business, which is Oh So Sweet Shop. And we're going to find out what they get up to, and what's happening in their future because they've got big, future plans i'm putting my beads away big future plans they have so um it, i think it'd be worth tuning in just to see what that is um yeah i think they're kind of going with the sort of trend of being online and and yeah so good for them that's what i say right now i've got all my beads back in the pouch safely i might add a couple more actually tie that up keep it safe 
yeah so lots of things going on and i'll if you're in the gold group i'll see you on thursday i don't know what we're doing we've done a book review haven't we and uh, abigail did uh, the interview with me <laughs> and on um when was it yesterday we did our we started our march journal page that's in the in the gold group and that's only available to gold members nobody else and like i say tuesday seven o'clock live on the website fingers crossed and then Friday, six o'clock, live on Lizzie Curtis page with Lorraine and Jeff from Oso Switch Up. Looking forward to that. In the meantime, I wish you a very good evening. I hope you uh, now go along and uh, make your make your Lexi, get all your pieces cut out and do some stitching. Don't forget what I said about cleaning your sewing machine. Make it your goal tomorrow, because I tell you what, I've got to do mine. Having just made, well, I made two flosses. And if you know my patterns, you know what a flossy is. And I would imagine it's a bit like um, a bird's nest in there at the minute. <laughs> right, so night night, everybody. I'll see you all again very, very soon. And let me know if you're on the website tomorrow watching because you can comment. Although the comments all disappear at the end. So I'm sorry about that. Technology, I don't know. See you all in another time. Bye, everybody.